Well, we begin the 7 a.m. hour with a search for a missing toddler that police believe is in danger. Two-year-old Amelia Jones was last seen near 211 Winchester Street in Monroe. On Thursday, a court ordered Amelia placed into protective custody after a child services investigation concluded that she is in danger and being actively hidden from MDHHS and law enforcement. It's believed that the toddler is with her 18-year-old mother, Bregan Bowles White, and her 48-year-old grandmother, Heather Bowles Irie. Now, police also put out this picture of a vehicle that Amelia may have been taken in. It's a black 2006 Chevy Impala with a Michigan license plate. And let's listen now, EFR5513. Again, that's EFR5513. We've posted all of this information at clickondetroit.com. And once again, here's one more look at the missing endangered child, Amelia Jones. If you see her, please call 911 or Monroe Police. Well, I, all eyes are on the storm tracker, excuse me, the storm tracker for this morning. And the skies, as Andrew Humphrey, track showers and storms that are expected to move through Metro Detroit. What a juxtaposition between those two shots, mm -hmm. right? You can see the green on the way, but look uh -huh. at that live shot oh, starting it's us gorgeous. off. Oh, gorgeous. That, that picture off the top of the uh, Penobscot is just spectacular this morning. Morning, Andrew. Well, it is a calm start to start things off, mm -hmm. but we are talking about a little bit of a mix up uh, later on today. Well, right? and it is spring and yeah. when you get these hot temperatures, we know how it all bubbles up and it come the end of the day. Well, well, go ahead. Take it away, Andrew. <laughs> exactly, Priya and Rod. That's how it works around here. Showers and thunderstorms can erupt in the afternoon, and that's what we have a possibility of later today. Now for your morning activities, setting up yard sales, maybe, maybe getting some exercise in, heading out to different festivities. You got Comic Con right here in uh, Southeast Michigan over in Novi. Things should be just fine all the way through the noon hour. It was 77 degrees by noon, but by 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, start to get a heads up and look out for any isolated showers that develop, and they really get going by 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon and afterward. It still gets warmer with highs that will be in the low 80s. If you're just joining us, there's Webster to say good morning to you. Nice shot of downtown Detroit with 64 degrees currently. Visibility so far is looking good. Now, these storms also come with a risk, a marginal one, so it's weakest on the scale. You can see it here in green across all of the lower peninsula virtually, but the chance of strong to severe storms, heavy downpours, frequent lightning, and the possibility of some gusty winds. But here's that timeline once again. More things warming up nicely, and it remains pleasant all the way until around 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Between 2 and 3, some isolated showers and a couple of thunderstorms start to, to develop. But by 3 in the afternoon until 9 this evening is when things really get going. Remember, with the Local Forecasters app, you can track all of this yourself as well. It's free. It's perfect when you're on the go, so download it now. The Local Forecasters app. Scan this QR code that you see on your screen. If you don't have time, head to your favorite app store. Search WDIV. All right, well, turning our attention to the coronavirus this morning, the CDC says Metro Detroiters should put, should put their masks back on. The increasing spread of COVID has our region back in the red. The CDC now classifying six counties as having a high virus spread. Livingston, Macomb, Oakland, St. Clair, Washtenaw, and also Wayne counties have now been elevated along with some counties up north. Sean Lay has our report this morning. If you go out in public, you'll notice most folks are not wearing masks anymore. No mask mandates coming from the state or coming from Oakland County, but the county is again seeing a high transmission for COVID-19. Folks really should, if they're out in public, wear a mask. This is not a mandate. You know, this is not rocket science. We know what works. Oakland County Medical Director Dr. Richard Faust again says, start thinking about grabbing a mask, distancing, washing your hands for a full 20 seconds. He says people have become complacent because people getting COVID-19, most are not getting severely ill. What's happening now is people are having breakthrough infections. You know, they're fully vaccinated. They've had COVID in the past. Now they're getting Omicron now and they're not quite as severely ill. They're seeing the same in Washtenaw County. There's a high community level for COVID transmission. With a, a good amount of virus circulating, it's time to consider those extra precautions. So especially if you're at higher risk, you're gonna wanna mask up indoors. The recommendation now at high levels is that everyone mask up indoors. Sean Lay, Local 4. Well, now uh, with COVID, not the only thing that health officials are worried about. They're also worried about the flu. 
Now they say it's not too late to get your flu shot. They're seeing double cases of both flu and COVID together, and the results can be devastating. Time now is 7.05 and Governor Gretchen Whitmer has reached out to leaders at Abbott Nutrition, whose Sturgis plant was shut down following a recall about getting production of its baby formula back on track. Empty store shelves have prompted parents to start taking matters into their own hands, but the state is warning parents about that this morning. Jason Colthorpe has this report. Anybody who has a baby who's under a year old, the there's nothing available. Trying to track down formula for her baby Bree has been so hard for Trisha Sanford that she and Bree's father Brian have had to call well, in the reserves. Uh, we don't have a lot of extra free time in the day to be driving around looking for the formula, so that definitely plays a part. Uh, driving store to store, we have family members out looking for it. And a few days ago, Trisha was getting desperate. Yeah, we had been looking for about a week and a half and had no luck, so we were becoming down to our last probably four bottles or so until we didn't have anything. So our last day. That's when she called the pediatrician to see if they had um, any alternatives for us to use because um, we could not find her specific formula. And they said that they had samples for us and if we could come in and pick them up. Absolutely, that's cause for baby Brie to shout for joy. But so many other families are not having the same luck. And that prompted politicians in both Washington and Lansing to announce efforts to help. In the meantime, the state health department does not recommend making your own formula or diluting the formula you have to make it last longer. But as Trisha knows, desperate parents will do whatever they have to. When they're used to a certain kind and then you immediately switch them. I mean, she was miserable for three days before our pediatrician gave us what she has been using for the last you know, eight months. I'm Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. And Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel announced her office will prosecute any cases of price gouging when it comes to stores selling baby formula for more than what it should cost. All right, the money trail from two political campaigns has led to federal charges against the former mayor of Romulus. Leroy Burkroff was elected mayor in 2013, then re-elected again in 2017. Now, the feds say that he was using money donated to his campaign for personal use, spending it on himself and his family, which is, of course, illegal. Friday's charges only mention a nearly $2,500 payment to the Belleville Yacht Club, but those investigators are also looking into money that may have gone toward a vehicle, as well as entertainment and other personal expenses. Time now is 7.08, and the Wayne County Clerk has deemed former Detroit City Council President Monica Conyers ineligible in the race for county executive. Conyers had filed to run against Warren Evans. The clerk cited the Michigan Constitution, saying she cannot hold the position due to her 2009 bribery conviction.